Over the last several decades, a growing number of Americans have chosen to spend more time and money on swimming pools. And that has sent investors flocking to pool supply companies. One such company is Pool Corporation, a humble distributor of pool cleaning and maintenance products, a $15 billion cash generator with a soaring share price. It is massive compared to its competitors, resistant to competition from internet retail, and specializes in products pool owners cannot do without. And there is Leslie's, the largest chain of pool supply retail stores in the country. It has seen its share price rise since its IPO in late 2020 and is, say analysts, already beating expectations and raising targets. Americans stuck at home during the coronavirus pandemic turned their attention to surroundings they could enjoy and focused on their backyards. It's a great time to be in this industry because we're just at the beginning of the spike. But the recent spike of interest in outdoor living is part of a decades-long trend that industry analysts say is likely to continue even after the pandemic recedes. There are, of course, risks. A slowing housing market or trouble in the economy could imperil growth. There have also been some recent short-term hiccups, such as a shortage of chlorine tablets used to purify pool water. But already in 2021, people are opening up their pools 20 to 30% earlier in the year than they did in 2020, which means they will need more chemicals and supplies to keep their pools swimmable. For now, demand is pretty strong. Analysts who follow the pool industry say it has been steadily growing since the 1970s. There was an explosion of interest in pools and swimming following the 1972 Munich Olympics, when Mark Spitz won seven gold medals, a record number that was only surpassed by the eight gold medals won in the 2008 Olympics by Michael Phelps. There are a few trends that have fueled the growth. Migrations to suburban areas or more temperate states, and a rising interest in outdoor living, which includes spending more time in the backyard and more money on landscaping, barbecues, and of course, pools. Outdoor living is expanding your usable space to the outside. So what that means is you either put in a deck, you put in a patio, you put in an outdoor kitchen, uh, a fire pit, a pool, and you're basically spending time with the family in the backyard. There are about 14 million pools and spas across the United States. A lot of those pools are concentrated in certain states, especially in the southern and western regions of the country. There are about 5.2 million in-ground pools in the United States. 75% of them are concentrated in 10 states, and more than half of American pools are located in just the top three, California, Florida, and Texas. The southern and western parts of the U.S. have also seen populations grow over the last several decades. The south, for example, has had net population gains most years since 1981. According to a note from Goldman Sachs, in the first quarter of 2021, more than 35% of home searches on Redfin, a national real estate brokerage in metro areas in southern states such as Texas, Arizona, and Nevada, were done by people living outside those metros. In contrast, less than 13% of searches for real estate in Washington, D.C., New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, and Boston were done by out-of-towners. A lot of these growing metro areas are more affordable, according to Goldman Sachs, again citing Redfin data. In areas such as Phoenix, Las Vegas, and Austin, out-of-towners had an average home-buying budget that was 23%, 16%, and 32%, respectively, above average. That may leave homeowners in these areas with more money to spend on home upgrades, according to the note. That will include pools that need to be built, installed, and maintained. The millennial dream has changed. And now the millennial dream looks more like the boomer dream. And I'm going to live in a suburb in a little house with a pet, a dog, a kid, and a pool. Interest in pools is growing so much that local pool maintenance businesses have even become social media stars. Mark Jones started Blue Street Pools in 2017 after he became fed up with working in the corporate car business. After he and his wife bought a house in New Orleans, Louisiana, he started working on the pool in the backyard. A neighbor, impressed with his handiwork, asked if Jones would be interested in taking on a client. If he needs my help, there's probably 15 to 20 other people that would need my help. And if I secure 15 to 20 accounts, 
I'll be making what I was making and I'll be good to go. So I just pretty much just, I made some flyers, uh, passed them out in my neighborhood, you know, um, you know, went on Google Maps, looked at all the pools in my area, found out that there was 38 pools around my subdivision alone. So I just targeted all the green pools that I saw on the map because I knew those people needed help. Jones said he is on track to pull in about $100,000 annually and plans to hire workers and expand the business. He also began posting about his work on Instagram, and a friend told him he should try TikTok. He said he tries to break down his process simply, without jargon, to help people understand how to take care of their pools. Now that the water level is low, let's get the brush. As of July 2021, Jones had about 1.8 million followers on TikTok and counting. A lot of his clients come through word of mouth, but his social media presence has helped raise his profile and given him a low cost and relatively easy way to market himself. They can connect with me before they even know me. And then when they call, I'm the guy picking up the phone. So, you know, it's crazy. People call me, but hey, you're Pool Pro MJ from TikTok, man. I, you really picked up the phone. It's like, yeah, man, this is my business, dude. <laughs> it has also led to some sponsorship deals with pool supply brands, such as Blu-ray XL, a chemical product, and Pool Parts To Go, a retailer. There are a few companies that lead different segments of the pool market. There is Latham, a leading builder of fiberglass pools. The company is a bit of a disruptor. Fiberglass pools can be constructed more quickly than concrete and vinyl pools and for a relatively affordable price. Hayward and Pentair make pool equipment, such as pumps, pool cleaners, and filtration machinery. Leslie's is the country's largest pool supply retailer. Leslie's is really serving those residential homeowners who have pools in their backyard. That's their bread and butter. They have five and a half million active customers in that demographic. It went public in the 1990s, but was later taken private again and remained so until its recent IPO in October 2020. It has more than 900 stores, which sell chemicals, supplies, and even above-ground pools and saunas. About 80% of its sales are non-discretionary items, meaning they are things pool owners have to buy in order to maintain their pools. These include things like chemicals for treating water and filters for pool cleaning equipment. Unlike many other retail segments, a lot of pool products don't change that much from year to year, so the retailer does not have to worry about short shelf lives or product obsolescence. Leslie's is also a multi-channel retailer. In addition to its stores, it has a web business, a mobile app, and exposure to a third-party marketplace. Our digital reach is five times greater than the next digital competitor. And we actually capture almost 60% of all pool and spa digital traffic. It is also pretty vertically integrated. It manufactures, or at least packages, a lot of the products it sells, which allows it to both better control its supply chain and control product quality. Finally, like a lot of specialty retailers, it tries to distinguish itself by offering an extra level of customer service. But we have, as of last year, a new digitized water testing in stores. It's called ActiBlue. Um, and it's, I mean, it's terrific. Right, you put water in this little thing that looks like a centrifuge, swirls it around, and then it, it prints out across 10 different chemical parameters um, the health of your pool. Mark Jones of Blue Street Pools sources his supplies from different places, but he learned a lot about cleaning pools just by walking into the local Leslie's and has kept shopping there because he has a relationship with one of the staff members. The first time I came, it was just like I was another customer, but I kept coming back like every other day. Like, yo, like, what is this? How does this work? How are you trying to pump on? I was asking question after question after question. By early July of 2021, shares were up since the IPO. And the company had a market cap of about $5 billion. Take a look at Tailwind from this pandemic. And you look at the number of pools that have been built last year and this year. This is basically creating several hundred million dollars in revenue for Leslie's over the long term. And then there is Pool Corporation, the largest of this group, and a leading distributor of pool maintenance supplies and chemicals. The company started out as a small warehouse wholesaler based in New Orleans, Louisiana in 1981. It went public on the NASDAQ Stock Exchange in 1995. 
Its customers are the extremely fragmented population of local contractors that are either building or remodeling a pool or putting chemicals in the pool for maintenance. Those contractors need a local one-stop distributor. I would say Pool Corp is very unique because they are the dominant distributor. They're about 15 times bigger than the number two player. Pool Corp also has generated very consistent sales and earnings growth over a long period of time. Earnings growth has averaged about 20%. Shares have performed fantastically well. In early June of 2021, for example, they were trading around $440 and had risen more than 65% in the previous 12 months and 373% over the last five years. Over a 25-year period, on average, the shareholder return has been almost 30%. That is far greater than the S&P 500. So Pool Corp is just a very special business. Sales have grown every year since 2010, though their biggest leap was in 2020, when the COVID pandemic sparked a 23% increase. Pool Corporation's revenue streams are also steady. About 60% of what it sells is non-discretionary. There is reason to think the longer-term trends driving pool construction will continue. Number one, you have millennials starting to buy homes for the first time. They're one of the largest cohorts ever. And surveys that I've seen suggest that outdoor living is the number one place where millennials want to invest. Two, you've got more working from home. With people working from home, they're investing in the home and they want to extend the home to have more outside space. You also have migration out of cities to the suburbs where people are more likely to have a pool. And then you've got an acceleration of the population migration south to the big pool states. Pool installations are still far below historical highs. In 2020, we saw 94,000 in-ground pools installed. This year, we're looking for between 105 and 110,000 uh, to be installed. And for the next couple of years, experts are projecting, you know, in that six-figure range. So that is above recent history, but it is still a, a massive discount relative to what we were seeing decades ago in terms of annual installation. It's not all optimistic. There's a chlorine tablet shortage due to the COVID-19 pandemic and a fire at a plant in Louisiana in August 2020. The Biolab Lake Charles plant is one of the largest chlorine suppliers in North America. About 60 to 70 percent of pools in the U.S. use chlorine tablets. There are alternatives to chlorine tablets. Some forms of liquid bleach are safe for pools. There is also salt chlorination equipment that turns salt into chlorine. Chlorine tablet prices have gone up dramatically, but industry analysts like Merkel say customers shouldn't worry too much that they won't be able to sanitize their pools. Longer-term risks are things like weather. A cold and rainy spring or fall can shorten the pool season. Bad weather also slows down new pool construction or remodels. But overall, there are good reasons to think that the pool market will continue to thrive. It also stands to benefit from technological change. One of the biggest complaints that people have about putting a pool in is that they're a pain in the neck to maintain. Well, if you can now control these products with your phone, and, and, and what I'm talking about is the lights, the pump, the heater, the pool cover, you've just made your, your life a lot easier. The other thing that these products can do is you can connect them to your contractor so that they can do preventative maintenance. So if you want to have that pool party for Memorial Day weekend and your pump goes out, your contractor is going to get an alert and they're going to be able to come out and, and fix that for you. Based on the research we have, only about 20 or 30 percent of the install base actually has any kind of smart technology or IoT connected products. And it's a huge opportunity that we think is going to you know, grow over the next 20 years. Leslie's is already rolling out a program called AccuBlue Home, which is a connected device that monitors a pool's water chemistry and a subscription plan for chemicals and services. And all you do is you scoop a little water out of your pool. You've got the device, the home version of the device. You stick it in there, spins around. Your pool score goes to our app and shows you step by step what you need to do and which products you need. And then you just push a button that is basically a fix my pool button. And we either deliver the products you need to your home or we deliver them to a store where you can come pick them up. And the, the, the software in both those devices is identical. It's our proprietary software. So, you know, you're going to get consistent results. As of June 2021, 5.5 million customers already have the service installed. Everything is going through automation. So 
where you know you have a robot that a clean the bottom of your pool for you you can control it from your phone you can control uh the speed of your motor from you know from low medium to high from your phone you can control everything from your ipad from your tv all this type of stuff is automated so it's going to be a lot of things that are going to be taken over by robots not not yeah because we have pool robots like robots and and technology and software and things like that but there's still going to be a need for pool guys and girls out there because there's only so much that they can do such solutions may allow swimmers to spend less time worrying about the chlorine and more time enjoying the water